Hey, what's up guys? Justin here, and welcome to 65 Drums. Today I'm giving my full review of the Roland TD-17 KVX. Now this drum set is kind of interesting, because Roland usually didn't make drum sets of this size with this caliber of sounds. They never did that sort of thing under $2,000, but now they finally have. I feel like competition has been rising recently, forcing Roland to really go all in and make a really nice drum set. This is Roland's best value for your money drum set they've made in years. I think the only other comparison was back when like the TD-9 was like one of the better drum sets you could buy on the market. But don't get me wrong, the TD-17 is definitely not perfect. It has a lot of downsides. So I'm gonna go over the good, the bad, talk about each pad individually, the drum module, do some playing examples, and then of course, talk about the drum set as a whole compared to the competition. Let's just start off by talking about the one element that actually holds the entire drum set up which of course is the drum rack. I'm a little bit 50-50 on the drum rack to be honest. It's one of the weaker elements of this drum set. On the one hand, I really love how compact it is. When I went and bought this drum set off of a guy, I literally just folded the drum rack in half and then put it in the trunk of my car and was off on my way. With the TD-30K, it's a bigger drum rack, it's a lot heavier, and you have to fold down the back seats and do all this stuff. This is just way more compact. It also came in this tiny little box that it got shipped in. It's just amazing how little space this drum rack takes up. It stays pretty well though. Like when you play really hard, nothing like tips over or anything. As long as you lock everything down, it's a very, very sturdy drum rack, even though it's not that large. I also really love the fact that they have ball joints for the snare and all the cymbals. So you can position the snare however you want. I kind of wish that the snare arm was a little bit longer so I could scoot it a little bit farther away from the drum rack but overall, I love that I can position it however I want. Also the cymbals, even though they don't have a boom arm, you can still get it 99% the way you want it to with the way everything's set up. And the cymbal arm that it is on, the one straight piece, is so long that you can position this to be even too tall for me, and I'm six foot six. So there's a lot of flexibility in making this drum set feel large. I also really like the fact that the floor tom isn't stuck in place. You can slide it from left to right on this right arm of the drum rack, and so you have a lot of freedom in positioning that one. There's pretty much only two big downsides to this drum rack. The first is that the two high toms are kind of just stuck in place. You can't really reposition them, they're kind of just stuck there. You can tilt them this way and that, but you can't move them very much like you can with the floor tom. And the other downside is that because it's so portable, they made the front two posts of this drum rack really close together. There's just enough room to put the kick drum between those two leg posts, and that's pretty much it. What if you want to upgrade to the KD-120, which is the kick drum one step above this one? It's like 12 inches across. There's no room to put that in between those two you know, legs right there. You could put it behind the drum rack and then scoot back, or you could put it in front of the drum rack, but that would look a little weird, and you have to put your leg right between the two legs of the, of the drum rack. It wouldn't make that much sense. It's doable, but I just feel like having the two legs of the drum rack so close together kind of limits this drum rack. And especially if you want to have some nice stage presence, get like an 18 inch kick drum, you'd have to go buy a whole new drum rack. So just know that going in, the drum rack is a tad limited. Hey, what's up? Justin from the future here. Just got to hijack the video for a second. While editing this video, someone messaged me and said, hey Justin, did you notice they removed the boom arms from the T17 KVX after they launched it? And I was like, what are you talking about? They never had boom arms. And then I went through my old photos that I took of the TD-17 launch event, and I saw there were boom arms all over these drum sets. And so they literally took that away after they showed it in the launch photos. I find that to be a little sketchy, especially because it was probably for cost savings or something. It was one of the nice little added touches of the TD-17 KVX. And then they removed that and just give us one straight pole with a ball joint on top. It was probably a little bit cheaper to manufacture. So I'm not a fan of that move but it is what it is. Now moving down to the ground, we have the kick drum. This is the Roland KD-10, not to be confused with the Roland KT-10. Now this is the newest version of the Roland KD-9. There's KD-9s all over the place because the KD-9 is the kick drum that came with the TD-11, the TD-15, the TD-25, and I think the last version of the Roland TD-9 drum set. And a lot of drummers want to know, does this new kick drum feel drastically better? Now I would have to say it feels pretty much identical to me personally. It's got that like cloth rubber uh, fabric feel to it. It's like hitting a really, really hard pillow. That's the, best, that's the best analogy I can think of. It has a nice solid feel to it. It's not so hard that it feels like a rubber hockey puck, but it's not overly soft. So they've really nailed the feel of this kick drum. It does sway a little bit while you're playing, but it doesn't actually move backwards. They've got some Velcro on it. They've redesigned the front leg piece. 
so it stays pretty sturdy and you can play double kick with this. Now that's one common question you always get when you make an electronic drum review. Does it work with double kick drum pedals? Thankfully, Roland always makes really good kick drum pads, but sometimes other companies don't. For example, this Cap Percussion KT4. This has a larger playing surface than that kick drum behind me right there. But even though it's got a larger playing surface, this doesn't really track double kick playing very well at all. Like it doesn't sense both pedals very accurately. And so even, even though some pads can actually fit two kick drum pedals, it doesn't necessarily track them very well. Thankfully, this one is very, very accurate. Okay, so let's move ahead to my least favorite part of this drum set, which is the PDX-8 Tom pads. Now, if I had to hate one part of the drum set, it might as well be the toms because they're probably the least important elements of a drum set. But still, they're kind of annoying. The reason is they have two rims. They have the rubber rim, which every drum needs, and then they have this stupid inner plastic rim. So when you have two rims, it makes the drum pad actually look bigger than it actually is. It's only got, I believe, like a eight inch playing surface. Every once in a while, your stick will accidentally hit the plastic rim. It'll make this annoying clinking sound. It's just kind of irritating, to be honest. And also, when you take the mesh head off, you'll see that Roland used to just have the plastic piece be a separate piece. So you could buy whatever mesh head that you wanted, put it on there, and then put this plastic piece on top of it, and then screw that together. That was fine. But now they've actually glued that plastic piece to the mesh head itself. So it's like a proprietary mesh head now. I hear that you can take a knife and cut away the mesh head material, and then use a third party mesh head, but you're probably gonna end up buying this proprietary mesh head. I just think that it's kind of annoying. They probably did it for cost saving, and it technically is a good pad. Like the accuracy of everything is darn near perfect. These things are nearly indestructible, and of course the mesh heads are very good, so you're probably not gonna rip through it for years, but still, it just kind of rubs me the wrong way. Roland's been making these pads for a long time, even though they know that drummers don't really like them. So as you can tell, I'm not a really big fan of the Tom pads, but I feel like they really nailed it with this brand new snare they just designed. So this is the PDX-12 pad. And as you can tell from the name, it's the PDX line. So it's technically in the same tier as the Tom pads, but it's got a completely different design to it. It doesn't have the inner plastic rim, thank goodness. And it's just a very nicely designed snare drum pad. It doesn't have a shell, so it doesn't look very fancy. And you may or may not like the look of it, but it's a very accurate snare. They also paid a lot of attention to the rim. They made sure it wasn't overly tall. Sometimes companies will make like a metal rim and then put a two inch rubber rim on top of that, making like snare shots or cross stick feel a little bit unnatural. But this, they've got the height of everything down, so it feels very, very good. When you flip the pad over, you can see that they've put the drum trigger right underneath the logo, right facing towards you. If you hate hot spotting, where you get a spike in the middle of the pad and then it's very quiet near the edges, don't worry, this does not have that at all. But of course, on the downside, because it's side mounted, it doesn't have positional sensing. So if you want positional sensing, you have to go up to the Roland TD25 line to get that. Other than positional sensing, literally the TD25 line has nothing going for it. The TD17 is like the better drum set. I can't remember who it was, but I saw a photo of a guy who just bought a whole boatload of these 12 inch pads and made them his two floor toms and his high tom. And yeah, it's just really cool. It's a very cheap, high performing pad from Roland. Okay, so let's move on to the symbols. You have the usual suspects here. Roland doesn't really design symbols very often. You got two CY12C crash symbols, 12 inches across, two zones. They've done some stuff in the drum module, so doing a cymbal wash is way easier now. I don't know if it's like it's analyzing your playing and trying to figure out whether or not you're trying to do a cymbal wash, but it's way easier just to slowly swell a cymbal. So they're both, you know, CY12Cs. They've been around for a long time. The only redesign is they don't have the white plastic, you know, back plate anymore. They just have that matte black look. The ride symbol is a CY13R. It's got a bell, bow, and edge zone. The bell is a little bit hard to trigger. You actually have to hit it with like the shaft of your stick or just hit really hard with the tip of your stick. It's a solid symbol. They're all well designed. They're gonna last a long time. Roland is good at designing symbols. But of course, as far as the symbols go, the real star of the show is the VH10. It's basically a VH11 that's thinner and lighter and costs a hundred bucks less. 
I did a full versus video. If you want to see them go head to head in some like playing comparisons and stuff, I highly recommend that video. But yeah, this is a solid hi-hat and it's not that expensive. If you want to buy this and add it to your older rolling drum set, you can do that. I can't promise compatibility, but as long as you have a drum module that has a preset to handle it, it will work. Really, my favorite two pads are that brand new snare and that brand new hi-hat. They nailed it with the design of both of them. They're really fun to play on. And no one really makes a really solid, good hi-hat for 300 bucks other than Roland. They make the best hi-hats in the entire business. When you step back and take a look at the drum pads and the cymbals overall, it's a great package. It feels very fun to play on. My only real critique is that they should have had a slightly larger floor tom. So even if they're not going to put a 14 inch floor tom, maybe like a 10 inch floor tom would have been nice. And also I feel like the ride cymbal should have been like 14 or 16 inches. It should have been a little bit larger than the size that it is right now. It just seems a little bit too small, especially the bell. I can't tell you how many times in my playing examples videos that I've been filming that I've tried to hit the bell, but I've missed it because it's just like really tiny. Okay, so now it's time to move ahead to the drum module. The thing that actually senses your playing and then produces a sound to match that. The TD-17 is a huge step up over its predecessor, the Roland TD-11. While this drum set does have like 50 kits and then 50 preset kits, so in total you're getting 100 kits, really doesn't have that many sounds inside of it. It's got like five to 10 snares, five to 10 different kick drums, and so on and so forth for all the individual drums. And then they just mix and match them a billion times to make 50 individual kits. But the sounds that they do have are very, very good. The snare has a nice bite to it. It also has a richness, especially when you're playing ghost notes. Kind of hard to explain. The cymbals also sound way nicer. They don't have like the harsh overtones that would make them sound incredibly realistic, but they do have a richness to them. When you play quietly on them, they sound very nice. And also it's very easy to do cymbal swells on these for some reason. Just very nice cymbals and a very nice snare kick sound. The toms I feel like are the weak point as far as the sounds go, but if you start doing the EQing and you start tuning them up or down, you can get them to a nice place. I will have to say, Roland does have their signature sound. They do a lot of heavy processing to their samples, so they have this slight synthetic edge to them. You're either gonna like the Roland sounds or you're not, depending on what you've thought of previous Roland drum modules. But if you do like that Roland sort of signature sound, this is a huge step up over the Roland TD-11. And I do like the way it sounds. Before I jump ahead to the editing options and stuff inside of the module, here's some quick playing examples.
So the TD-17 drum module, it's basically a dumbs down TD-50. I don't think it actually has TD-50 sounds, but it just reminds me of the TD-50 very, very much. But it's way easier to navigate. You've got dedicated buttons for things that you wanna to get to. For example, if you wanna tune the drums, in previous drum modules, you'd have to go through some menus and then find the tuning option. With this, you just press the tuning button and bam, now you're tuning the drum. Press the muffling button, bam, you're muffling the drums, or you're taping the cymbals. You can do all kinds of things like that because they have dedicated buttons for that sort of stuff. I kind of wish this other button was put over by the setup button because those are kind of like your advanced user settings. But other than that, the navigation of this drum module is darn near perfect. But of course, Roland is like 20 modules deep now. So they've had a lot of time to iron out some of the bad drum module designs they've had in the past. They give you a surprising amount of control. You can have room ambience. You can put your drum set in a virtual stadium, a virtual studio. You can change the size of that virtual room, the virtual wall texture, the virtual mic placement inside of that ambience. And then you have a master ambience knob so you can turn it up and down. Don't be fooled if you sit down and play this drum set and you can't really hear anything with the ambience because it's very subtle in like the factory default mode. You have to go in there and make the room very large and then make it stadium or something to really hear a huge amount of ambience. And of course the great news is they give you a lot of output controls. So if you only want this ambience to go to the snare, you can do that. If you only want a big thunderous kick drum, you can just send it to only go to the kick drum. They give you a lot of control. And because they let you split zones here, you could send the ambience just to the rim of Tom 1 if you really wanted to. And because you can split zones, that also means you can double the amount of pads on this drum set. So if you don't use Tom number two, make that into two one zone crash cymbals, as long as you buy something like a drum splitter. So aside from ambience, they also give you a full effect suite. So if you wanna put chorus on this, that's fine. If you wanna put a flanger effect on this, you can do that sort of thing. They give you a ton of different effects. And while some drum modules do give you the ability to do stuff like that, they don't always give you control on how those effects are applied to your drums. With this, you can go really fine tune all the effects and then route it to individual zones of individual drums and then leave it off individual zones of individual drums. They give you a lot of control here. And of course, they let you EQ every single individual drum and then they give you a global two band EQ over the entire drum set with these two knobs at the top of the drum module. This drum module also lets you import your own samples. It only lets you go two layers, but at least it's a thing. Roland has always been very hesitant to allow you to import samples into their drum modules because they've had this thing about our drum modules need to have three milliseconds of latency. That's their big thing they're always pushing. And they could have put it in other drum modules at lower prices before, but they would have had to crank up the latency to like seven or nine milliseconds. Now that they have the hardware to do it at three milliseconds, now they've included that feature. Also, they let you layer sounds. This is pretty big. If your snare just seems a little bit flat, you can just layer your mahogany snare with your steel snare, pitch one up a little bit, pitch one down a little bit, and now you have this really, really full sound. And again, this isn't like something that Roland is pioneering. They're kind of late to the party here, but it really unlocks the potential of this drum module. You can do a lot when you layer sounds and import samples. So I'm really glad that Roland finally has put that feature inside of this drum module. There's really a surprising amount of things you can do inside of this drum module. So if you want a very detailed video on that, I've already made one. It's my TD-17 tutorial. I just released it the other day. Go check that out if you're thinking about buying this drum set. So I love most of the things about this drum module. The only real downsides is the fact that it is using a cable snake. It doesn't have dedicated knobs for headphone master outs and like aux in volume. So those are some downsides. Also doesn't have faders at the $600 price point, but as an overall package, there isn't a better drum module for $600. And of course, the one feature that you don't really think about when you buy this is the fact that it has Bluetooth. Not for your headphones. The reason why no one does Bluetooth for your headphones is because there's an obvious delay between you hitting and actually hearing it in your headphones. So the Bluetooth is actually for your phone. When you turn on your drum module, it automatically connects to your phone, just like when you sit inside your car. Taken as a whole, this is a very solid drum set. Roland crammed a lot more value for your money into this drum set than they usually do. And I've just had a great time playing this. This is a very fun practice drum set. And if you do some big upgrades, you can make this into a performance drum set if you really want to. Now, of course, because this is a review, I always try to give you one other option at the same price point. And in this case, there is one at the exact same price. And that's the Elisa Strike. No one ever mentions the Elisa Strike. They always mention the Elisa Strike Pro because, you know, it's the bigger, cooler looking one at $2,200. 
But that's a different price category. I wouldn't really compare the Elisa Strike Pro to the TD-17 drum set. The real comparison is against the base model, Elisa Strike. So it has one crash, one ride, three toms. The drums are a lot larger. Some of the kits inside of the TD-17 sound better than some of the kits inside of the Elisa Strike because they put a lot of bloatware kits that just don't sound very good but the kits that really sound good in the Elisa Strike are incredible. So overall, the Elisa one is bigger and it just sounds better, but it's had a rocky start. Like when it was, when it was first announced, foam pillars were falling over inside the drums, trigger plates were snapping in half, trigger wires were snapping in half, you had a firmware issue where the hi-hats weren't triggering very properly, so it kind of burned a lot of people, including me. But thankfully, they have fixed most of those issues. They've been redesigning the internals of their pads. They've done firmware updates. So literally, the Elisa Strike of a year ago is not the same Elisa Strike that you get today. They've fixed pretty much all of the issues that they've had. So for that reason, I feel like the Elisa Strike is now a legit option against the TD-17 KVX. You just decide which one you wanna buy. I'm not gonna tell you which one to go buy. I will say that if you decide to buy the Elisa Strike, don't buy a used one because you don't know if you're getting Gen 1 Elisa Strike with the problems or if you're getting Gen 2 with the problems that have been fixed in some of the redesigned internals. So if you buy one, buy a brand new one out of the box. Now, regardless of the competition, I'm really happy that Roland has finally seen the light. They're starting to make better drum sets at lower prices. This is something we've been asking them to do in the past. I've made videos talking about this but now they made a drum set under $2,000 with a really nice snare, with a hi-hat on a stand, with sounds that are really solid. Some of these sounds rival the sounds inside of my $2,000 Roland TD-30 drum module. I'm glad they're finally putting that amount of value into a drum set at this price point. And I'm happy to see that they're moving down this path and I can't wait to see what their TD-35 or whatever the drum set they're making right now that will eventually replace the TD-25. And just like I said earlier in the video, this drum set is way better than the TD-25 line. Don't even buy the TD-25 anymore. It's overpriced compared to this TD-17 drum set. Now, if you've ever played the TD-17 or if you own one, leave a little mini review down in the comments below. I'm really interested to read what you guys think of this drum set as well, and also your analysis of this versus the strike. Have an amazing day, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in a few.